Hi everyone, how is it going? This is another BitGuide session. Welcome Sina, uh, welcome everybody. Today we're talking about a very, very interesting topic. We just had the Farsi room. I was like super excited and super pumped about this topic after Sina told me everything about it in Farsi. So um, yeah, it's unfortunate that, you know, we do these rooms twice. So what, what, yeah, you won't see my excitement now in English because all my excitement was already in, in Farsi. But maybe, I don't know, maybe um, Sina will say something uh, more that will excite me again. I mean, there is nothing about Bitcoin uh, that is not exciting anyway. So uh, usually, a... usually when you learn something about Bitcoin, it takes twice to fully understand the fully get the mind 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 blowing so yeah yeah maybe, maybe I, we'll get some of that I, I just had after a very not very long time but uh i haven't had an orange pill moment for some period of time but uh sina gave me such feeling today definitely with this topic so it's a very interesting topic if you're listening to this uh you should definitely listen to the entire episode. We're going to talk about it all. So it's all about Bitcoin backed mortgages. So uh, I want to start with a few questions. Sina is going to tell us all about it. And the first question would be the very basic one. Why the hell even get a loan, Sina? Can you... Um, explain that first i mean i thought it's all about stacking sats why should i take a loan right so um basically uh in the fiat world that they have built for us um the rules of the game has changed um i mean i remember my parents always telling me that you know debt is not a good thing you got to minimize debt or actually try not to have debt and uh, this was the responsible thing to do. But, um, and, and in fact, actually building, sa saving and, and accumulating capital was what, uh, what, what, what was great and was positive. But now in, in the constant inflationary environment that we, we're in, um, debt actually has become the asset. And uh, people build wealth by having a ton of debt. And basically when you have debt, um, you guarantee you're kind of short fiat and fiat is guaranteed to lose value. And, and that's how you uh, make a lot of money by, by getting a lot of uh, loans in, in, in different avenues. Um, and basically what happens is let's say you, you get uh, a loan for a million dollars and then you have to pay, I don't know, maybe uh, 5% a year or something on that. And, and as time goes on, the value of the dollar goes down and, uh, and, and your monthly payment will be less and less significant. After a while, as your wage catches up and, and your wealth grows, uh, you will see that those monthly payments uh, are not as big and they're constantly going down. And over time, uh, you, uh, your, your effective interest rate actually goes down. So um, this makes a lot of sense for people that have uh, especially high net worth. And uh, what they do is they, instead of selling their assets, they uh, get loans against those assets and keep them, keep the asset under their own uh, name because it grows fast. And if you sell your asset for consumption, you have deprived, your, deprived yourself of that appreciation. Like if you think about someone like Mark Zuckerberg, You know, life and their regular expenses by getting loans against those assets rather than trying to sell it uh, if they if they have a big uh, expense or something. Um, so actually, the people who are in the system they know how to benefit from the fiat world, but most other people uh, may, may not realize the, uh, the may not realize the value of getting. Uh, loans. If you if you actually are smart and you make the right choices when agreeing to a loan, it can actually be a profitable decision. So that so that's the deal. 
Um, but um, uh, there are certain things you got to be very careful about when you are signing up for a loan. So uh, it's, yeah, it's so, not, yeah. So basically what you're saying is it makes sense to take a loan because, uh, I mean, we're talking about mortgages, right? We're not talking about any type of loan. We're talking specifically today about mortgage loans, right? Uh, which is a type of loan which you use to purchase a home. And uh, just to summarize, the reason it makes sense to do that is because the currency that you're getting is an inflationary currency, which means it loses value over time. And because it loses value over time, it makes sense to purchase assets with it uh, because over time, those assets gain value versus the currency that you took the loan from so you have you you use the currency which is inflationary and you purchase this inflationary assets with it and over time you basically gain through the depreciation of the currency itself right yes Exactly. So the appreciation of the asset exceeds the interest you're paying. So at the end of the day, it becomes a guaranteed benefit, almost guaranteed profit. Uh, but specifically, uh, so, so like I said, you know, you have to be smart in getting a loan. And, and a lot of the, the, the check uh, boxes are, uh, so a lot of the questions are answered in a mortgage in a positive way. So uh, they pass uh, several um, issues. Uh, let me first explain how you can benefit significantly in a mortgage. Uh, it's basically, a, a, it seems like a fraud to me. Um, so let's say you're trying to buy a house that is uh, $1 million, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the bank will require you to put up something like 20%, $200,000 as collateral, uh, or not collateral, just down payment. Mm -hmm. And then they will mm -hmm. finance the other 80%, $800,000, cash available to you to buy that house okay so you only had 200,000 and you were able to buy a four times more than that uh, finance four times more than that right so essentially this is a leverage of 4x all right now when you when you leverage up and you lever up uh, on your money the problem like like if you do that on an exchange or on a trading application um, you will see that the, this is risky because if the value of the collateral goes down the, uh, by by certain level, like twenty five percent or something, your uh, your forex leverage will end up being a disaster. They'll liquidate your your collateral, and you're out of the deal, and you you walk out of it with less wealth, right? So you've lost a ton. But in the mortgage space, you um, you got a forex uh, purchase compared to the initial money you had, right? But if the value of the home goes down- Can you explain what Forex means? Forex stands for foreign exchange. Forex, uh, uh, no, no, no. I just mean simple four times more than that. So- A Forex. Okay, yeah, yeah four, yes, four sorry times. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, sometimes 5X, sometimes Forex. So um, the, the reason you don't know that is the, is, uh, because you you are not trading and that's great but everyone who, who does trade they are very uh, familiar with these uh, 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 terminologies so I just levered up a ton and then if the value of the house comes down uh, legally as long as I pay they can't um, foreclose on me right mm -hmm. so that's like you know, borrowing with leverage from an exchange where the exchange can't liquidate you. That's just, that's amazing. And, and that's that's kind of a protection that law has added and they kind of uh, 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 created this safe, manufactured safe space for home buyers. Now, um, so, uh, so, so in this scenario, once you buy the house uh, this way, over time, let's say, like just taking the, the number, the, the, the rate of growth in the past 40 years, uh, houses go up by something like 5 or 6%. And that's historical. Obviously, more recently, 10%, 20%, a lot faster. But let's, let's take the average of 5 6% growth. 
Um, so every year, the you your one million dollar asset goes up by five percent. Okay, but but you pay an interest rate of something like two two percent, three percent. Again, that's historical, or maybe uh, something that was common before all the crazy things happened after COVID, right? Mm -hmm. More recently, it's like five percent uh, because it's gone up a ton. Now, uh, ultimately, what's going to happen is the appreciation of the house will exceed the uh, the interest payment uh, that uh, that you, you 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 have. So it's it. So this almost becomes a you know a, a perpetual profit uh, profit uh, source in which you only had to put down twenty percent of uh, cash. It's not it's not like you you know you you had a ton of uh, opportunity cost there. Yeah, but so but this is I got this is an environment. I'm not liquidated. So so I got leveraged. I'm not able to be liquidated, and then the appreciation of the asset is bigger than the interest, but there's more. Uh, that house has value. Let, let's say this is an investment house, right? Mm -hmm. Investment uh, purchase. I can, I can uh, uh, rent it to someone. And usually the numbers that I've looked at, the rent you get from a, a house like that is kind of like, you know, 80, 90% of the way to the, uh, to the mortgage. So just even if you account for the rent, um, a big portion of the mortgage is paid by that. And that's not even including the asset appreciation. So it becomes a kind of a no brainer business decision. And that goes to explain why so many investors and uh, uh, you know, huge uh, uh, hedge funds and all they are entering, they've entered the housing market and they're kind of aggressively trying to force everybody to sell their houses to them because they can get these loans and these loans are effectively subsidized by government to be lower rate than the actual rate on the market. So the more you, the more loan you get, the better uh, you're off. I think the key point to make here is that this is a very unique thing when it comes to mortgage loans, right? There is this environment where the government has put certain Regulate, regulatory frameworks that are in favor of this market. So businesses can take properties much easier or get properties financed much easier than anything else, right? Uh, I think this has also been the main reason why we had such an inflationary period in the past 20, 30, 40 years when it comes to the housing market. And why, you know, almost no average person can actually purchase a home cash, right? Because there is such an attractive way of getting a finance, uh, financing uh, source from banks. Yeah, and then what happens is like, you know, the Federal Reserve keeps the rates low. And like I said, it ends up being lower than the actual rate of the appreciation of the assets. So it's a, it's an arbitrage. It's a manufactured arbitrage. If we didn't have somebody playing with the value of money, you would see that you know as soon as the rate, the, the interest payments are less than the appreciation of the asset, you will see a ton of people apply for these loans. Then the rate of the loan goes up. Goes up. Ultimately, you see that that arbitrage opportunity will be closed quickly because markets are efficient, right? But this doesn't happen because we have government intervening. And guess who is benefiting from this the most? You know, think about BlackRock or many, many major, you know, uh, sources of funds or or or, or uh, institutions, they understand this thing exactly. And they are closest to the banks. They are able to get super low rates, lower than the consumer rates. And this, to, at that point, this is a no risk guaranteed profit business for them to, to just buy up all the houses, increase the price of the house, uh, price out regular people who need it for living. And, uh, and, yeah. and Essentially, you, you, know, you monetize you monetize an asset that shouldn't have been monetized. Yes. And, and the result of that is regular, the consumption will be hurt. Yeah. 
But I mean, we've talked about the Fiat Ponzi scheme system. So uh, in this episode, though, we want to talk about how we can, as an as an individual, benefit from uh, the the same system that they have built, right? Because that's the environment we live in. That's just the way things are. So, um, in summary, because our currency system is an inflationary system. We have a bunch of uh, rich people who keep using these collaterals such as real estate and they just refinance their, their collateral over and over and over again. And they just uh, use the currency to uh, finance their lives uh, all over the time, right? That's, that's, what, that's what they do. So uh, maybe we can move a little bit towards Bitcoin. How can uh, Bitcoin play a role here? And uh, how is the mortgage business uh, emerging or is moving towards a Bitcoin environment when it comes to collateralization? Okay. So, so before, before I move on to the Bitcoin, I just want to mention like being aware of this situation is really important for regular folks who might, <clears throat> might be saying, okay, I'll kind of delay my, my purchasing of a house because, you know, I maybe I have this and that reason that I still want to rent for some time. You know, once you understand the opportunity that allows institutions to kind of take advantage, at least the least you can do is like buy uh, when you need it, not to delay it. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about like trying to extend yourself or kind of make converting into a, a big business or whatever. Uh, but at least it will give people the understanding that, uh, you, you know, buying a house when you need it is a sensible thing. And, uh, and, and you basically stop losing, stop losing uh, to institutions as soon as you do that. Okay, so that's one thing. So the next thing, uh, we are just trying to provide information, right? So do your own research, talk to your financial advisor. Uh, uh, but uh, so, so. What I explained basically is how you can benefit immensely from the current fiat system um, by getting loans that allow you to get, uh, you know, have a small amount of cash, but buy uh, a big investment. And then, um, and then you have a guaranteed appreciation of that investment or more than the interest. So, um, then uh, we want to move on to talk about the this new development that's about yes. Bitcoin backed mortgages. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so far uh, banks are reluctant to accept Bitcoin as collateral. Right, so so when you buy a house, that house is the collateral, right? So the bank is going to use that if you stop paying or if something happens, they're going to uh, for foreclose on you. Uh, but like I said, not when the market fluctuates, and that's the advantage. Only if you stop paying, uh, uh, it, it's going to be liquidated. So uh, if I have a house that I bought with the loan and the house value halves, the bank has no right to call on that collateral. As, yes. long, as, as long as I am paying the monthly principal, the bank cannot foreclose me. The bank cannot... Uh, take away the collateral because the value of the collateral has depreciated. There is, I mean, and this is only in the U.S., right? That's just yeah, you have to you have to explore anywhere you are before you sign anything. You have to yes. ask what's going to happen. Anytime you you put up collateral, you got to exactly know what's going to happen to that collateral if market fluctuates. In the U.S., most of the mortgages are structured in a way that if the value of the house goes down. Uh, they can't they can't force you out right so that's very important to ask and it's not everywhere it's not 100 percent uh, of the loan so it's important um and uh uh so yes um uh, most banks are reluctant to accepting bitcoin because mm -hmm. they uh you know some banks even accept stocks but to a lesser extent the house is really easy to get as collateral because it's a it's a physical thing and you can't uh, uh, pick it up and run away, right? So it's there, 
And anytime you stop paying, they can come after you, but it's an expensive thing because they have to go through some legal proceeding. There's going to be some time until they can uh, finish the uh, court process. And then selling things on the market uh, for real estate is, is expensive. You know, you lose uh, something for the transaction cost. There's agent fees and there are uh, other fees you have to pay because you want to sell it fast. Right. So it's not a great thing, but at least there is something. So uh, they like that. Um, some banks accept a little bit of, uh, you know, stocks, but Bitcoin is very rare or maybe uh, none of the traditional institutions accept it as, as collateral. Uh, collateral. Yes. yes. So why is that? Because they have, uh, there is, we, ha we still have some, regulatory uh, uncertainty and some of these institutions are you know they're benefiting a ton from just operating in their current environment why would they want to do something else on when there is some uncertainty and they have some internal institutional inertia which is you know um uh, kind of you know the, the organizational processes there makes things slow they have to you know uh, you know walk through all the decision discuss and kind of reach consensus inside the company and that's when most people don't even understand what bitcoin is and uh, including a lot of the financial experts so and then if you want to do this you also have to build your own infrastructure you have to have some level of technical knowledge or at least work with another company that provides these services so it's it's kind of a important step um, and, and we are not there yet, but we are cl getting close, uh, go closer and closer every day. Okay, so, uh, but the, the reason that uh, this was a great time to talk about this topic is we are just seeing the first services um, that are offering Bitcoin backed mortgages. And um, some of the examples are Milo and Ledin, and there's another company, uh, Figure, that's trying to. Uh, offer these services and what they will do is they will accept your bitcoin as collateral and the benefit of the, the, the advantage of that is once you um offer your bitcoin as collateral uh, uh, they they will not request that down payment so you you suddenly don't have to put in put up that uh, 20 percent down payment in so, these, you in these the 20%, so you save the 20 so you save the 20 percent basically Exactly. Okay. And a lot of people are Bitcoin millionaires, but cash poor, right? So Bitcoin has appreciated a lot and you don't want to sell it to, to come up with a down payment. It's a dumb decision. And uh, you will also have to pay taxes on that. So it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, these services allow you to just leverage that money and, uh, and, and uh, use that as collateral. They will give you 100% uh, 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 financing over that collateral. So let's say you have $1 million of Bitcoin. Uh, these services would give you 100% of that money in dollars, right? And which is amazing, but let's see how, why does it make sense to them? The reason is they not only get your Bitcoin, they also get your house as collateral. So they actually, in fact, they have $2 million of collateral for a million dollar loan, right? And um, if Bitcoin price fluctuates, they still have the house. If uh, something happens uh, uh, to the house, they still have the Bitcoin. And it's actually a lot better position to be in compared to a traditional um, Bank. Uh, institution. Exactly. Because then they have to go through this messy process of court and foreclosure and the drama of, you know, throwing people out of their homes. But if, if I got a mortgage uh, backed by Bitcoin and I'd stop paying or something happened, there you go. Within minutes, within hours, they can liquidate it. Liquidate it. This is a much better, much better collateral. And that's why we say Bitcoin is pristine collateral. As a result, um, over time, any, any institution will kind of value Bitcoin as a better collateral than anything else. And how does it benefit regular people? The translation of this in, in the economic terms would be that interest rate paid on Bitcoin will be less than the interest rate paid on other assets. And can you imagine what effect this would have on Bitcoin price or Bitcoin demand? You know, suddenly all the collateral in the world, world will be inferior to Bitcoin. And that creates this huge demand for Bitcoin. 
as collateral and huge disincentive for uh, of uh, for selling. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just the mortgage market in the U.S. is two point six trillion dollars, and huge amounts of money gets uh, moved in these markets, right? So this is a major, major thing. However, still, if the price of Bitcoin fluctuates a lot, like 60, 70%, you can expect these services like Milo and Levin to liquidate your Bitcoin. So it's, yes. it's still you know, a, risky, a risky business. But the more they get integrated with the traditional businesses, the, if, they, if some of these uh, 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 businesses are bought by bank or something, they will increase their service competition will kind of improve uh, the service they offer. And we might see a safer and safer service to- For to sure, that, that's, just, that, that's just a question of time, right? Until competition will uh, make things better. But let me ask you a question. We did an episode about um, Bitcoin rehypothecation and um, that topic was something that we really were like, drumming on the table and saying, hey, you should hold your own keys. You should have your own private wallet. Uh, You should never leave your Bitcoin uh, on the exchange and so on and so forth. However, if I lend out my Bitcoin to get uh, a loan to purchase a home, isn't that a compromise on that? And if, 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 if it's not, how? Right. So um, you have to be very careful whenever you put up something as collateral. What if they kind of lose it, or they rehypothecate it, or they kind of mess up somewhere? They go out of business. What happens? Um, in the case of mortgage, the interesting thing is if your counterparty goes out of business, you have so you have the house, right? So you immediately have something. On top of that, in the traditional market. In the traditional uh, uh, finance, you have lots of protections. You have useful insurance. You have, you know, the legal system to go to. But if you're getting some of these things from a DeFi platform on unregulated and uh, shitty, you know, no one knows what's happening in the background. It's not audited. Um, With some smart they, they contract offer... that you don't even understand that could have a technical bug and so on and so forth, without Absolutely. any rules and regulations. So when you're operating outside the legal system, things are completely different uh, uh, and and you have to be like super, super paranoid. But when you have a legal guarantee that like if the company loses your Bitcoin, you're going to get it back or something like that. So these are the things you have to be very careful when reading these contracts, right? So what exactly happens if they lose my Bitcoin, right? If you have a legal guarantee that as long as the US legal system works, uh, it's it's not uh, something that's that's super scary, right? Again, it's a risk, but uh, but it will be it, it will be lower and lower as as these services get integrated into the traditional. You know system. what I just got in my head. Uh, I mean, it's obvious to me that competition will also force these companies to compete on a, uh, on a on a on a product level in terms of giving better rates as well right i mean obviously or even 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 in the in the terms they could compete with each other and say for example there is company mortgage uh, uh, offer company a who says we will take your bitcoin as collateral and we will not lend it out we will use a multi sig a system you can see the collateral we can never touch it unless you co-sign with us or unless we have a legal right to force liquidate and we have to use the third key that sits with another lawyer um in in such case we have the legal capacity to do so but other than that your bitcoin is on this address it's auditable you can see it it's proven uh, that we have the reserves there. We're never going to touch it. But at the same time, you're going to have to pay this much in interest, right? But you could also have one other company who says, or the same company even who says, okay, you can pay less um, in fees and in interest, but we can use the Bitcoin to lend it out to others as well, right? Which is more risky. 
exactly so uh especially like as the uh adoption increases people will be a little bit more aware of of the risks here and like you will see these things like proof of reserves being a lot more prevalent and companies will compete based on that so they will try to give you more and more guarantees about how they're managing your bitcoin and uh, and it's going to be safer and safer so at the moment again i'm not i'm not thinking that you know letting any kind of institution have control over your bitcoin is a smart decision but we exactly know yeah, we're you still know, early right we're still very very exactly. early certain factors might improve but there's no barrier uh, again except time it's just time sitting between us and that point and everyone is watching right all the big banks are watching these small startups eating their lunch and they're either going to buy them out or they're going to just copy them and uh i just I just imagine the demand for Bitcoin uh, exploding when these products are built on top of it. It's just, you know, it, it's 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 actually it's products built on top of Bitcoin, literally, right? And if 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 it becomes this pristine collateral, naturally the demand will increase, and the supply is limited, and the sky's the limit, right? Right. So I mean, think about. Like if you go on on a service like I don't know BlockFi, Lend, something like that. If you if you want to lend your Bitcoin, uh, uh, the rates they offer is like, or maybe if you if you want to get a loan, Bitcoin uh, backed loan, the rate is something like seven to ten percent, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's significantly higher than the rate you pay in a traditional institution. Why is that, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's no. Uh, First of all, we have this uh, manipulated low interest rates. So uh, traditional institutions have access to Federal Reserve that uh, uh, keeps the rates low and distributes uh, cheap funds to the, the bank banking system, right? Mm -hmm. So that that's one. Um, but on top of that, Bitcoin is seen as, as this very strange, uncertain um, thing that's outside regulatory framework. So a lot of institutions don't like it that much, right? But you and I know that it has technical advantages over any kind of other collateral, right? So in theory, it should be cheaper to get Bitcoin, you know, especially like if you if you see that today's value, today's price of the market is $39,000 within seconds, you can liquidate that Bitcoin for that exact amount of fiat, right? Which is this unbelievable. Is different, completely different from like having a house as collateral, which yeah. is like, you're gonna lose a ton of it in the foreclosure process, to, even like the, the, the paperwork. And it's and international, it's global, it's not local, right? Like it's going to open this huge gate of everyone in on the planning being able to participate and compete, right? Yeah. And just, you know, selling a house involves uh, something like 6% agent fees, right? That's that's uh, uh, given by the seller, right? So 3% yeah. each side, yeah. but usually 6% is uh, paid by the seller. And that's in itself is a huge loss. And I'm not even talking about having to sell it at a lower price because you, uh, you want to foreclose quickly. Um, so what does it mean? It means that uh, if if this uncertainty around Bitcoin goes away, if we get some more regulatory uh, uh, friendly developments, if these institutions get more uh, friendly to Bitcoin as they are, just we just heard Fidelity opening up, uh, you know, a Bitcoin investment in 401ks. That's huge, right? So these things will happen. These things will, will arrive. But when, when that happens, people will, will realize that, okay, we have Bitcoin and we have a house. Um, Bitcoin seems to be a much better collateral. So the in interest I'll be, I'll be charging people in a free market should be lower for Bitcoin. Now, mm. I want to give you this example. Uh, just Milo was basically the deal they're offering is that I get your Bitcoin and the house and the rate they are offering is something like five to 6%. And just the latest numbers I've, I've uh, seen in the in the mortgage market, the average mortgage rate that has gone up recently is something like 5%, five percent, mm five -hmm. five five and a half, depending on mm -hmm. 
um, the source you look at. So, um, so, so the unregulated market, which doesn't benefit from the government subsidy, and they don't, they get no benefit from Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae or these institutional, uh, these government institutions, uh, government sponsored institutions. Without that, just on the free market, they were able to reduce rates to kind of comparable levels to the traditional uh, uh, finance. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say they explore this better. They get merged with some traditional uh, uh, financing sources that uh, have better access to uh, cheap money. Mm -hmm. Over time, they will be just offering better rates than everyone else because they accept Bitcoin. Now, just think about what's gonna, what's that gonna do to the wow. demand for Bitcoin, wow. and and the, you know suddenly you know people are not stupid. They're gonna see that if I have Bitcoin instead of this junk other asset, I'm gonna get better interest rate on it. So let's let's sell everything that I've kept for just uh, investment, and then now I have trouble getting good loans on it. Let's just sell it and convert it into Bitcoin and and uh, get nice interest rates on it, right? So that's why I'm tracking these interest rates like a hawk, like uh, 10% wasn't that that attractive compared to three, 4% on the traditional mm -hmm. market. But right now we are seeing like things are getting, you know, competition is really getting uh, strong. For sure, for sure. That is so fascinating. That, that is so fascinating. This is amazing. Yeah, it's just game theory at its best play, right? It's, it's unbelievable to watch such a new asset class to emerge into traditional assets. It's actually all these comments that I hear from a lot of Bitcoiners even, that Bitcoin is here to fight and to end uh, banks it's actually not the case because Bitcoin can be an amazing collateral for banks to offer products and services. Uh, Bitcoin is, just like Michael Saylor says, Bitcoin is pristine, is the apex predator of all its competitors because it's so pristine in all terms that you can put a lien on it, you can uh, instantly cash out, liquidate it, you can move it at the speed of light, you can be sitting somewhere in Japan or in the US, it doesn't matter, it's neutral, it's the most pristine asset in every aspect imaginable for all sorts of products to be built upon, even in the Ponzi fiat uh, that we all complain about, right? Which is really fascinating when you think when you right. when you really think it through. When you uh, uh, go through the entire game theory of what can happen if uh, lending platforms come in, and then the banks come in, and so on and so forth, and then all of a sudden you don't have a threat, you have opportunity, and then you have mass adoption. Yeah, imagine like a bank saying, you know, I don't want your I don't want your house as collateral. That's just not good enough for me. I want yes. something that I press a button and, this and is, liquid it. This is Sina. This is the number one business for banks. Mortgages are the number Absolutely. one business for banks. This is their I mean, main cash. I just count. said like two two point six trillion dollar mortgage market in the US. That's that's 10% of GDP. Just think about it. Like it's a huge market. And these markets are really boring. You know, nothing major happens, but big flows of money are, you know, are happening here. Mm. And, and like things can have huge marginal effects, uh, so, even in the early years. So just to give a notice to anyone who is listening, these are, again, I have to repeat this. These are just... Uh, things we discuss on it like do your own research talk to your lawyer talk to your accountant uh these products and services are at their infancy stage they're not uh very developed yet we're at the beginning of an emerging market when it comes to mortgages and and, and loans so just be really careful right now it's very dangerous 
to uh, put a lien on your on your Bitcoin or anything like that. Just uh, be aware that there's a lot of scams out there. Uh, the best thing to do right now, this is what I tell everyone, Sina, is just huddle your Bitcoin for the time being until these products are developed further. And then you can make a decision on which one of these competitors you want to use to put a lien on your Bitcoin and purchase a home or whatever. But it's interesting to see the first products uh, emerging. So um, you mentioned a few names. Do you want to uh, tell us a little bit more specific the names and where they are? I, I hear so you say Elon, Milo. Milo is one of them, right? Yeah, Milo is a U.S.-based uh, company, and uh, <clears throat> so so that that the way they operate is like like I said, they get the house, they get the Bitcoin, and then they finance the house one hundred percent, and they charge you uh, like a reasonable uh, fee. What's the um, What's the name of the other one? Um, Ledin, L-E-D-N. I believe Ledin. it's a Canadian company. So yes. it might be that they only offer these mortgages in uh, Canada. I think they are still working on it. So if you check the website, it said we are working diligently to bring this to the market. So any any um, a month, this could happen. Uh, I know they've been working on it for a while, at least since late last year. Yes, this uh, is Ledin. If you go to... Yeah, if you click on learn more on the on the Bitcoin mortgage, yes. Um, so go down and it explains how they kind of combine the house and the collateral, and then the Bitcoin as collateral. And uh, yeah, so basically, uh, all of these services are marketing themselves as a way to not sell your Bitcoin, which is which is great, especially for those who have a big stack. Um, so they kind of have this wait list and it's been going on for several months. So it, it's, uh, it shouldn't be long before they offer this. Yes. Right. Very interesting. So, very, very interesting. Yeah, I mean, like even if you're not using this, these loans, I mean, the reason it's very special and interesting is even if you're not using any kind of mortgage, this is going to change the game. This is going to convert Bitcoin. Into, this from is a super, this is super bullish for Bitcoin as, a, as an asset. Exactly. It's going to change the narrative, convert it from this, you know, uh, uh, NASDAQ correlated uh, 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 speculative, speculative asset basis. Yeah. A pure collateral, pristine collateral that's going to be, you know, incentivizing people to hold it and convert uh, other kind of assets to this because you, you get a lot better service you, uh, on, on Bitcoin. So a huge, huge thing. I encourage everyone to just keep an eye on these services. And I think we are at an inflection point where, uh, last year, we just had heard of one company. This year, we have three companies of so Milo, Ledin, and there's another one called Figure. And as they get bigger and bigger and they prove that they're making money and it's a useful business, you may also hear mergers, mergers and acquisition with the traditional uh, uh, banks and institutions. So uh, I, I don't know, maybe we are it's only, coming. You know, a year or less away from Yeah, uh, it's coming. It, it's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when at this point, for sure. Sina, thank you so much for doing all this research. Very, very interesting topic. I really enjoyed that. We need to uh, do a follow-up session on this. Um, as we see the market develop, uh, let's do another um, episode about uh, the developments just to give listeners and people who follow our content a, a follow-up on, 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 on developments and uh, what type of loans are available and, and uh, all sorts of information that would be necessary to, to get a loan in, in, in such terms. Thank you so much for that. Again, guys, if you're listening, uh, give us a follow on Twitter. Uh, we are found on Twitter. Uh, our handle is bigguide underscore io. We uh, are going to go live very soon with the website. I promise we're working on this. Uh, Sina and I will have a meeting probably this weekend uh, where we're going to finalize the structure of the first very course to have amazing Bitcoin related content when, I mean, structured courses in different topics. What is Bitcoin? What is money? How 
does a wallet work and so on and so forth so be uh, uh, be following us and uh, make sure you uh, take one of our courses and recommend it to your fellow bi- uh, family members and other Bitcoiners. Even if you know about Bitcoin, you can benefit from these courses. I'm definitely sure about that because it's not only for beginners, it's also for advanced users. Anything else you want to say? Sina? Uh, yeah, Sina? Just, I mean, I think the the one, uh, the, the first course we will be able to release, the one that's uh, like 100% ready right now is a course about money, right? So uh, uh, there we have like one hour of discussion about the concept of money and how it works. This is something that most people don't know. And knowing this, it not only helps you understand how, how the system is working, but also it allows you to protect yourself and benefit from it. And like these foundational pieces of information are extremely hard to find in other places. You know, we, we did lots of research, weeks of research, and then, uh, uh, you know, selection of the most important pieces and recording and all. And uh, uh, we will build this foundation, which allow you to understand the importance and the relevance of uh, you know, the, the stuff that are happening around us all, all day, including these development of these uh, uh, Bitcoin back mortgages. Yes. So finance yes. is very, very complicated uh, for 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 not not a good reason. And understanding it, it, it is is going to be a huge advantage to anyone, as well as you know other other content we'll be producing for uh, understanding the Bitcoin itself, technology, and and the and and uh, security and different things. So we want to be a one stop shop for learning about Bitcoin. Like the first place to start to get the most important pieces of knowledge that's curated over years and months um, in, uh, to, be, to be easy, easily accessible and simple and, uh, and uh, trustworthy. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Sina, for all the input. You have re-orange pilled me today when it comes to Bitcoin mortgages. Um, I'm going to be following this. Uh, I was really skeptical before our session today about these uh, companies, to be honest, but uh, you opened a completely new um, uh, paradigm in my head. Uh, I, I hope it did the same to many of our listeners, but you really opened uh, my mind towards uh, such business ideas. Thank you. Thank you for that. Glad to hear it. Uh, we are tracking yeah. Bitcoin's real effects, not yeah. the... Uh, speculation and price go up and down. I, that's the only thing I'm interested in. What's the real impact in the economy? Yeah, adoption. Adoption matters. Nothing else. Adoption matters. And this is part of the adoption, for sure. Thank you, Sina. Take care. Thank you. And thanks, everyone.